Well, hello and a very warm welcome to episode six. Can you believe it is the final episode of BA Fringe at the BA Conference Europe? Now, as you already know well by now, BA, uh, BA Fringe is an informal or less formal uh, live stream that fits around the edges of the main conference, exploring perhaps different ideas or uh, bringing uh, ideas from speakers in little uh, bite-sized espresso-shaped uh, tidbits. Now, of course, because this is the last episode, I can say whatever I want. I mean, they can't take me off air now, can they? Uh, but of course, what I am going to say is it has been an absolutely fantastic conference so far. And I'm absolutely certain that we've still got a lot of really great content uh, coming throughout the remainder of today. And some of you will be lucky enough to be going on one of the, the half day workshops tomorrow. If you're not, go and look at them. I believe some of them still have tickets available. So check them out. You might want to, uh, you know, you might want to give them a go. So some very important things to note about this episode. One is we will be drawing the prize draw for the winner of the free ticket to the BA Conference Europe 2022. That, comp that competition is already closed, but keep your eyes peeled because we will be drawing that uh, competition very, very soon. But there's a flash competition in this episode as well. How would you like to get your hands on a copy of the BCS Business Analysis Techniques book, third edition? It's a very hefty, hefty old uh, volume, has 123 uh, techniques in it. Well, if you would like to win a copy, you know what I'm going to say. If you've seen any of these previous, uh, uh, these previous episodes, all you need to do is submit a shout out in this episode. We're going to prioritise for that prize shout outs that came in during this episode. So all you need to do is get your shout out at bafringe.live and you might win one randomly selected winner. And, you know, assuming we have some shout outs in this episode, it will come from those shout outs. We'll win a copy of the uh, Business Analysis Techniques book kindly donated uh, by our friends at Assist KD. I know I've mentioned this already, but if you haven't been over to the exhibitors booths yet, do make sure you do. Check out all the exhibitors, but be sure to check out Assist. They've got an excellent stand, loads of free stuff, other competitions you can enter as well. So um, the prize will be courtesy of our friends at Assist KD. So get shouting out. Now, um, really, before we go any further with our shout outs or indeed our, uh, our, our announcements of prize winners, I thought it'd be really useful to get some input from some of the authors on what their favourite techniques are, because you might be wondering what some of the techniques in that book are. So here's a bit of a pre-prepared montage with some of the author's favourites. So uh, over to the authors. So the technique that I would like to give a shout out to is one that's called Control Influence Accept or CIA. This is a technique that I use all the time and I find it really useful both in business and actually personal situations as well. But it's particularly relevant, I think, when you're in situations where you're dealing with stakeholders. And that's because different stakeholders have different views and different ideas. And sometimes you have to understand what you can do when you're working in that context. It's a very, very straightforward technique to use because all you do is look at the situation and you ask yourself, do I have any control? So can I control what happens here or what decision is made? Can I influence the situation or do I just have to accept it? And the great thing about it is this, we can waste a huge amount of time and energy trying to control things that we can't control or trying to influence matters that we just don't have any influence over. And in those situations, if we just accept, then we don't waste that time and energy. 
Similarly, sometimes we can influence things. And that's when we might have to think about the situation differently. So my take on it is this. It's a really useful technique. It's relatively simple to understand and straightforward to use. The other side of it, of course, is if we decide, well, we can influence things or we just have to accept matters, there may be other actions to be taken. But that's probably the subject of a different technique. So it's really tough to choose a technique, but the technique that I've chosen is the most. Um, I think it's an awesome technique you can use in loads of different contexts. The letters stand for vision. Where do you want to be? What's your long-term aspirational outcome that, you, that you want, you're seeking to achieve? The mission is, again, long-term, but it's what are you going to do in order to achieve your end state, so to achieve your end state vision? The objectives, these, are, these need to be balanced, and they're going to measure your progress towards your vision and your progress in terms of completion of your mission also. The strategy, I like to think about this as your plan for success. What's your plan to, for success in terms of meeting those objectives, um, achieving your mission and achieving your vision? And then the tactics are more detailed, action orientated, and it's, it's those actions that you need in your plan and they're a bit more fluid um, as well. So this technique, it can be applied at an organization level. It can be applied to a product or to a service. You could apply it to a... Um, a team or a department. You can also use this to assess personal effectiveness. So it's a really adaptable technique that, that which, at whichever level you apply it, it's outcome focused. Um, and I think beginning with the end in mind, knowing what your outcomes are, helps you make decisions. It helps you make those uh, difficult decisions in some instances, it can really help you uh, to prioritize and decide what it is that you're going to do. Um, be most. Hi, I'm Dave Beckham, Principal Consultant of Tudor Consulting Limited. Uh, Adrian has asked me to talk about one of my favourite techniques for, for the BA Fringe. Um, I'm not sure this is one of my favourite techniques, but it's a technique that I've got a lot of mileage out in my career as a BA. Um, and it's one that fits in that strange, ambiguous window between BA and designer. Uh, I'm talking about data modelling which can come across as a very IT based technique, but actually is very, very business focused if you can do it in the way that the business understands. The way I used to approach this would be to get a load of post-it notes and write down the things that the business used to um, use as data items. They would normally be described as entities, but I would describe them as things because it made it easier to, to kind of talk about them. So a thing could well be a policy, or a thing could be a policy holder. And then the discussion would begin. So I would ask, if you have a policy holder, could you also deal with people who aren't policy holders? To which the business would normally say, well, yes, actually, they could be prospective customers, or they could be financial advisors, or they could be scheme administrators. So I would then respond that would suggest to me that the data item you have isn't really policy holder. It's perhaps person with an attribute of a type of person. And that could be a list of things such as scheme administrator, financial advisor, prospective client, etc. And that, that would uncover a lot of information about what the business actually does. Because if you can understand the data the business uses, you can really understand in a great deal of detail what they actually do. So that was one of my favourite old school techniques, really. A good old fashioned post-it note, stick it on the wall, write on it, and rearrange as necessary. So there you go. A bit, of, a bit of hints and tips about data modelling. Enjoy the rest of the conference. My favourite BA technique that I'd like to introduce is CATWO. This was developed by Professor Peter Treckland and his team at Lancaster University in the 1980s. 
and provides a tool to analyze what individual stakeholders believe about their business system, whether that is an organization, an institution or a department within those. In other words, it describes their perspective on that business system. According to Professor Checklin, the two elements in CAPRO are the worldview or Weltanschauung and the transformation. The worldview encapsulates what the stakeholder thinks their business system is about, why it exists, and the transformation describes what it does, its principal business activities. Personally, I also think it's very important to capture who the stakeholder thinks their customers are. The actors carry out the transformation. The owner is that of the business system and can make key decisions regarding its direction. And the environment captures any constraints within which it operates. Another technique, PESL, can be used to understand this environment. Using CATWO, a BA can uncover any conflicts of perspective between stakeholders, and also any areas where the perspective is out of step with the wider world. Very often, problems within an organization can be traced directly back to these conflicts, which must be resolved if improvement is to be effective. Fantastic. Well, a lot of food for thought there, I think. And you know, a massive thank you to uh, Debbie, Jonathan, Dave and Jim for giving their thoughts about the CIA, CIA technique. One that I wasn't familiar with, but it, you know, really, really useful for us to think about. Um, of course, the most a, a firm favourite, uh, CATWO and data modelling. So some really, really useful insight there. Um, I'm going to move straight on to some shout outs because we've got loads coming in. Um, we'll then shortly, very, very shortly, we'll, we'll draw the main prize, which is I'm sure many of you are waiting for. The envelope is in the room now. Uh, so we'll find out who's won the two day ticket to the BA conference 2022. Uh, and during the next section, like when we transition to the next, uh, the next guest, the competition to win the free copy of the book will close. So you do have just a few more minutes if you would like to win a copy of the Business Analysis Techniques book, uh, courtesy of our friends at Assist KD. Um, you could be a lucky winner that does that. You just need to submit your shout out. You've got a few more minutes uh, to do that. But let's go through. We've, and by the way, thank you to everyone. We, we've had like 60 or 70 shout outs. There are going to be more than we can read, but I will go through as many as I possibly can uh, before we draw the main winner. So we have um, Eugenio. I, I, again, apologies if I'm mispronouncing your name, but Eugenio says a big shout out to my colleague and friend Martina to have pushed me to try to be a speaker in this conference. That is such a lovely sentiment. And I think this is a reminder to us all, you know, you might be watching this, watching these sessions thinking, gosh, I've got an idea, but I'm not a professional speaker. I, you know, how could none of us are professional speakers? We're just BAs and we, you know, we like talking, uh, you know, everyone put themselves forward. Um, if you think about the, the keynote, be more pirates, maybe that could be an example of a bold move that you set yourself for next year. Uh, and of course, the committee and the process is very, very supportive. Uh, as well. We have uh, Faith who says, awesome and thought-provoking session. Pirates, major sell for me is about adapting the rules within reason to allow significant change and progress. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Faith. We have Donovan. Now, Donovan sent a picture <laughs> and uh, Donovan says, shout out to Jason Thompson for being a great accountability partner for the past couple of months as we've both prepared for our conference workshops. His contribution has made such a difference in my final output. Great reminder that together we achieve more. Uh, and he says, thank you very much. Again, you know, how fantastic is that? And if you're thinking about submitting for this conference or any conference, you know, why not get an accountability partner like that? So you can, uh, you know, sort of egg each other on, as it were. Um, Paula says, shout out to, Ag to Agnesa on digital exclusion. Understanding the diverse needs of users is key to inclusion. Absolutely uh, very, very true. And let's read one more shout out before we move uh, to announcing our first winner. Uh, we have Bronia. Uh, here, Bronia, who says, uh, shout out to Imtiaz, who was really nervous about presenting his AI session, but he smashed it. Couldn't tell he was nervous at all. 
really enjoyed the content. So again, massive shout out and kudos there uh, to MTS. And, and I know I've said this a number of times throughout these sessions, but do remember, if you've seen a presentation, a session, a speaker, and you really like what they've had to say, remember to connect with them on LinkedIn or wherever. We can't give real world virtual uh, rounds of applause, but in this virtual world, it will mean a huge amount to those speakers if you connect with them and tell them how much you've enjoyed the session. Think of it as your virtual round of applause. But the envelope is really in the building now. Uh, we're about to find out who the winner of the two-day conference to the Business Analysis Conference 2022 is. Uh, I, I, I hope you're doing a drum roll viewer in your home or office or wherever you are. Gosh, these envelopes are harder to open than they look, viewer. I'm not building suspense, I'm just inept. Right. And the winner is Faith Izuka. Uh, Faith Izuka, you have won a two-day ticket uh, to the Business Analysis Conference 2022. Faith Izuka, congratulations. We have your email address. I will just check that you submitted that. Yes, you definitely did. Uh, I will be in touch with you via email. I will connect you with IRM UK uh, so that they can sort that out for you. And again, massive thank you to IRM UK for donating that prize. So... This moves us on to our next segment. Have you ever wondered about um, digital neuroscience, ethics, and empathy? These are probably topics that aren't necessarily front of your mind. And this next speaker is going to suggest, quite rightly, I think, that maybe they should be. This is someone who many of you will know, um, Rachel Drinkwater. Um, she is a senior business analyst, but also a writer and blogger, a lecturer, uh, and you know, giving giving a fantastic presentation at this conference. But here's just a little bit of a, a, a of a sort of taster of it. So, Rachel, over to you. Hi, I'm Rachel Drinkwater. I'm a senior business analyst and also the blog strategy manager for the IIBA UK. I'm also a blogger, a writer. I research in the area of digital technologies and the impact it has on us as individuals and as a society. And this afternoon I'm doing a talk at the Business Analysis Europe conference on digital neuroscience and the importance of empathy in digital experience design. In his book, The Rise of the Humans, Dave Copeland states that technology is neither good nor bad. It is simply an amplifier of what we as individuals and society choose to use it for. And we're using it for everything. We live in an increasingly digital world. Even before the pandemic, we shopped, socialized, played games, took courses, did our banking and so much more online. Traditionally low tech industries became digitally disrupted further increasing our exposure to digital products and experiences. 15 years ago, a taxi company wouldn't need an IT department or a digital team. They would barely need a single IT professional. They might have a basic database or scheduling tool to manage their customers, their drivers and allocate one to the other. But that would likely only be used by one or two people in the organisation. Back then, it would have been laughable to think that what is essentially a taxi service would not only be a significant employer of IT and digital professionals, but half of their product would be a smartphone app. 15 years ago, we didn't even know what a smartphone app was. I'm of course referring to Uber, but as more and more industries have become digitally disrupted, many companies now have a customer facing digital product offering in addition to their core product or service. And many more now offer their digital experience as part of their core product, be that a device, an app or a website. As IT professionals and business analysts, this digital transformation of society has changed and shaped our roles, bringing us closer to customer facing digital products and services. This has subsequently increased the potential for our work to directly impact individuals and society, as Coplin says, for good or for bad. That's a lot of power to hold, and in the words of the late great Stan Lee, with great power comes great responsibility. 
Driven by the ever-changing trends online and competitive technology markets, the pace of digital product development is necessarily fast and product to market time is often short. This, however, introduces a risk to our society. It seems that barely a week goes by when an organisation is not in the news for breaching user privacy, losing user data, skirting along the edges of regulation around ethics or not doing the right thing. And tech giants and digital disruptors are often in the spotlight. But it's not just the tech giants. Many digital products and experiences are designed to capture attention, engage users and invoke some kind of action, usually conversion to sales or brand engagement. We live in an age where some say the scarcest resource is attention. And subsequently, everybody is vying for their slice of the attention pie. Many of the techniques used to do this are just souped up versions of traditional advertising and marketing techniques, exploiting the psychological and neurological processes of our brains. However, in the digital age, with that constant exposure to the online space and those digital environments, it's much harder to escape those techniques. But what's the problem with this? Well, numerous studies and experts in these areas have concluded that these approaches can be detrimental to the health and well-being of users. Techniques such as fear of missing out or FOMO, using amygdala hijacking messages such as hurry, only two left, and the constant barrage of notifications and pop-ups trigger stress responses and chemicals in users, reducing their ability to make rational informed decisions and in some cases contributing to stress-related mental health issues. A heady, addictive cocktail of dopamine and oxytocin, triggered by the nature of social platforms and online experiences, can lead to damaging patterns of the device use, such as continuous partial attention, habitual device checking and smartphone addiction. And there is evidence suggesting that the efficient nature of the brain contributes us to forming these less than useful habits. We're essentially training our brains to be distracted and not so great at remembering facts, concentrating for long periods of time and deep thinking practices. The moment we unlock our phones, we're exposed to a host of what Cory Doctorow refers to as distraction technologies. And our brains are extremely susceptible to these cleverly designed notifications, messages, numbered icons. How often have you gone onto your phone to do something quickly and found yourself still there 20 minutes later scrolling through LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram? We're really running a gauntlet every time we try to do something productive on our devices. Another area of concern is unintended impacts and misuses of technology. Those cases where technology is used by an unintended audience, where it's misused, where groups of people are excluded from using a technology, or where bias is unintentionally built into digital products. No social media platform is designed with the intent that children would use it for sexting. No digital product provider would actively build a solution that profiteers from a terrorist attack through AI-driven surge pricing. No photo gallery would be intentionally built not to recognise dark skin tones. But these are all situations that have arisen, causing distress and harm to users. And each of these cases could potentially have been preempted and therefore avoided with more analysis, wider user research, and by introducing greater diversity in the personas used to map customer journeys. And by investing time in mapping out potential unhappy paths for those who need more convincing about doing the right thing. Each of these cases and numerous others have been widely covered by the media with detrimental effects to company reputation and brand confidence. As business analysts, we are well placed to challenge. We have the power and therefore I would argue the responsibility to push for ethical practice and ethical product design, to use our toolkit to carry out more thorough customer and user journey analysis, to carry out impact analysis, risk analysis, and to use empathy to truly understand our customers and users. The more empathy we employ, the wider the range of stakeholders and users we speak to, and the more diverse our personas, the more accessible and inclusive our digital experiences will be. Now, it'd be naive to think that we could identify every single unhappy path and every niche scenario, but the more time we invest up front, the more chance we have of identifying unintended use patterns and unhappy paths, of building in accessibility and diversity and avoiding bias. 
Join me in my Digital Neuroscience 101 session at the Business Analysis Europe conference to find out how we can help protect our organisations from making these errors and contribute to a safer, more ethical, inclusive digital world where we can leverage the many, many, many benefits of technology whilst mitigating against the potential negative impacts. Fantastic. So much to take away from uh, Rachel there. I'm always really inspired when I hear Rachel speak. And I think she, she, you know, she, she raises some really interesting points there about you know, some of the ethics of these situations. And, and I think that's a thread, isn't it, that's being thread through this whole conference is around ethics and about diversity and inclusion and some of these other topics which might have once felt like they're detached from what we do. But quite rightly, many speakers are bringing them to the fore. So definitely be sure to check out Rachel's session, which is later today. It's at 2.35 and it's called Digital Neuroscience 101 and the importance of empathy in digital experience design. Um, also be, be sure to check out uh, Rachel's blogs and, uh, and, and the, 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 the sort of fantastic content that she puts out there elsewhere. So we do now have a winner of this flash competition, which I didn't tell you is actually they, they, there's three books to give away, so there are going to be three winners. But I'm going to read a few more shout outs out before I get there. I warn you, viewer, we are not going to be able to read out all of the, your wonderful shout outs, but we'll get through just a few more before we announce uh, the prize. So Chris says kudos to Bronia Anderson Kelly. She works tirelessly, tirelessly for BCS in the Isle of Man to organize events and networking. This really raises BA visibility in the business community and has helped me to be more engaged at work and outside as well. And I would absolutely second that. I think if you're on the Isle of Man, do check out the Business Analysis Isle of Man community, connect with Bronia uh, to get involved with that. Uh, Ryan says, first time attending the BA conference, thoroughly enjoying it, and any fellow BAs wanting to connect, please find me on LinkedIn. Uh, so since you've asked for people to connect with you, I will give your surname there, which is Ryan Smith. So that's Ryan Smith. First time attending, and I'm sure that won't be the last time uh, if you've had a good time here, uh, Ryan. So let's just take a couple more. Uh, Rebecca says, shout out to the conference organisers for doing such a fantastic job. 100% organising any event like this is a huge amount of effort. Uh, Michelle says, shout out to Kathy Burkage for her workshop on the stakeholder engagement canvas and mindfulness. If you didn't attend, I recommend you watch the recording as it's excellent. Thanks for sharing, Kathy. Uh, although I wasn't able to make that, I do know Kathy and she is fantastic. Um, Sam says, please could I shout out to the two fantastic track leaders, Ian Richards and Mike Williams, for their fantastic support to me and also to all of the other track leaders and organisers for helping the other speakers to put on what has already been a great uh, event. Now I would love to go through all of the other shout outs but I'll just let you know um, Amy and Jackie and Katerina and Martin and Moha um, Moha Mohanram, Simon, Eugenio, Michelle, Rachel, Simone, Eugenio again, Victoria, Adam, Paula, Thomas, Joe, we haven't forgotten you, we just have run out of time, but your, your sentiment is, uh, is very much appreciated. But that brings us to the final prize draw of the three winners. So, three winners, each win one copy, courtesy of our friends at SysKD, uh, the BA Techniques book. So let's see, uh, I'm sure you've got your drum roll happening at home. We haven't got graphics for this because we've just drawn them. So it's Adam Swale. Congratulations, Adam. Adam Swale. Uh, Paula Nairi Salif Salifu. Paula Nairi Salifu. Congratulations, Paula. And Joe Faye Gilbertson. Joe Faye Gilbertson. So congratulations to Adam, Paula and Joe. We have your email address. What we'll be doing is we'll be connecting you with Assist KD so they can arrange for delivery of your book. So congratulations and do enjoy that. Wow, we're six episodes in now, viewer. We really are at the very end. All that's left for me to do is to say a massive thank, to, thank you to you for viewing these sessions. This is always a bit crazy, 
For those of you that saw, saw episode one where we had a little bit of a technical issue, which you may or may not have noticed, they're always a little bit chaotic, but they are so much fun. And they are fun because you turn up, you put shout outs in the, in, in the chat and you submit shout outs. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to everyone who's made this happen, including the speakers, because BA Fringe would not be BA Fringe without the speakers. Uh, and the effort and the, the time they've donated to give us and you their espresso sized tidbits. BA Fringe could not happen without a huge amount of work behind the scenes. There's a whole bunch of people that make this happen, but I'd like to especially, especially call out Matt. Um, you will have seen his name in the, in the chat earlier. He produces all of the shows. Every single piece of graphics you see, Matt has had to design, including every single piece of uh, like lower thirds as they're called, every little uh, a graphic with somebody's name on. And I like to do like things like um, change my mind a lot. I'm a really awkward stakeholder, so I drive him absolutely mad. Um, all I would say in closing is enjoy the rest of your conference, connect with the speakers, connect with the exhibitors, come back next year and Try and keep the momentum going. You know, we, we've got a whole bunch of people here. This doesn't have to be a once a year thing. Let's stay in touch, connect on LinkedIn, and do please connect with me on LinkedIn, by the way, if you've, if you've even remotely enjoyed these sessions. Um, and uh, yeah, and I hope to see you at a future event. And if you've liked this content, there's more stuff like this on our YouTube channel as well. But anyway, enjoy the rest of your conference, and I hope to see you very, very soon. Stay safe until next year.